well-being. Stay healthy. Health and well-being are tonics for a happy and stable life. Well-being on AD4 TV Radio brings you lucid insights and hands-on engagement of issues towards your positive well-being. Watch Well-being on AD4 TV Radio. Well-being. Stay healthy. Hi there. This is Well-being on AD4 TV Radio. I am Eugenia Yuheme. I'm glad you could join us. Fitness is our focus on the show today. Fitness expresses a mix of conditions from mental, emotional to physical fitness. Our thrust is on physical fitness as I welcome Elizabeth Okwemipo. She's a fitness instructor and an embryologist. She's here to take us through what it takes to be certified physically fit. You're welcome, ma'am. Thank you very much. I'm happy to have you in the studio. Okay, so let us hit the nail straight on the head. Now, what does it mean to be physically fit? <coughs> okay. When someone is said to be physically fit, it means that the person can perform his or her day to day activity at optimum performance, endurance, and strength. And basically, this helps to um, reduce the risk of fatigue, sicknesses, diseases, basically. So, when, you're, when you can do your day to day activities, means you are phys uh, physically fit okay so now is physical fitness training beneficial or dangerous to stroke patients because sometimes it's actually very hard for them to move you know maybe one hand one leg the mouth you know so is it beneficial or otherwise okay in cases like this when it comes to bm to when it comes to stroke patients we we have to be very careful because one there are different kinds of exercises and then now you know the condition of your patients you would not want to stress the person further so we have what is called baseline exercises now you need to give if you're timing your patients so so minute to this minute and this kind of exercises you need to know what kind of exercise mm -hmm. you're giving your patient but on my own part i'll say that um exercise is more of the beneficial part than the dangerous part okay. depending on the baseline what kind of exercise you're giving to the patient because right now if you look at the benefits as compared to the um to the bad side is is better because it helps to circulate blood it helps the lungs it helps in um, flexibility of the bones and body parts okay. it helps to at least make them it, it helps to in improve their mind their cognitive part of the body okay so i would not want to say it is dangerous well depending on the baseline by the doctor or their physiotherapist okay so when you talk about baseline what do you mean by baseline well, when i say baseline i mean that okay now for someone that has stroke and someone that wants to build up his or her body mm -hmm. You are not giving them the same type of exercises. exercises. Okay. So, for someone that has stroke now, the least you can do now is tell them to probably be on a position, do knee bends, mm -hmm. wrist twists, yes. and some other little, little exercise, basically to help that stock part. The blood flow again. Exactly. Okay. For someone that wants to build up now, you can lift weights, you can do other very stressful exercises, exercises that yeah. they cannot do. Okay. So that's where the baseline comes in. Okay. Okay, so what is the psychology behind good academic performance in physically fit people? Because they say this person is exercising and so they're doing extremely well in school. And I'm like, what is happening? So I'm not doing exercises then, you know. <laughs> well, um, I want to, there's always the saying that goes that um, a healthy mind is an healthy body. So they cannot be too wrong. They are not far from the truth. Okay. And there's this link between the, um, the cognitive, but that's your academic performance and to your body, to the physical fitness part. Mm -hmm. And it's called, scientists will call it um, BDNF, that is um, brain-derived neurotrophic factors. Mm. They have to do with your sensory organs, your okay. nervous system, and every other part that's, that connects to the brain. So if this link is there, it's kind of showing that okay there's a link 
to your brain and to your body parts. Okay. So if you are redundant at the moment, your brain is definitely redundant. But if you are active, you are pushing your brain to be active. So I want to, to an extent, to so a large extent, I want to believe that a sharp mind is from a sharp body. Okay. Let's just put it that way. Work hand in hand. There are some people that are unnecessarily active but still don't have something up there. But to a large extent, if your body is active, your mind is definitely active. Active. Okay. So if your child is not performing well in school, you can do well to help <laughs> them yeah, engage in exercises. <laughs> yes. Okay. So how does heart health change with exercises? Okay. For your heart now. You need to get involved in cardiovascular, cardiorespiratory exercises. Okay. And now, why I said cardio, you know anything that has to do with cardio is your heart and your lungs and the rest of it. Right. So now, when you involve in such kind of exercise, your body is in a very good shape. Now, cholesterol level is good. Mm -hmm. Blood sugar level is very okay. Even the rate at which blood is moving from your body parts down to your heart, as your your heart is pumping blood, it's pumping at the right amount and right level. Okay. So now exercise helps to keep your body, your heart, your everything in a good condition. So I think that one answers the question. All right. <laughs> okay. So after um, exercise, after recovering from COVID nineteen, is it okay to engage in exercises? Because I, I really I really don't know. Okay. So I know that COVID-19 normally affects the brain. It affects the lungs. It affects almost very important body parts and organs. So in a situation where you have probably severe or mild COVID-19 um, disease, it is not so advisable for you to rush into exercise because now you need rest. So basically, if you are just recovering, it's advised that you rest a little. And if at all you need, it is necessary for you to start exercising back. It's a gradual process. You not know, do strenuous yes, exercises. you don't need to do that for some time. Because now, and even when you are exercising, when you are doing it on the gradual steps, if you notice that you are going out of breath, you can take a break. So basically, Cut yourself now, yes, before you, continue. you don't need to go into strenuous. Even after, even after a long time, you know the way your body is right now. Mm. So you need to take it slowly. Same thing come with the way stroke people are now. You can also give yourself some baseline. This is what I'm going to do for 10 minutes. If you are doing exercise for 10 minutes, you can do 20 minutes break, mm -hmm. 10 minutes, 20 minutes break, or 10 minutes break. So it's a gradual process mm -hmm. back into exercise so as not to endanger oneself. Yeah. Okay, so usually if they are doing like one hour, you reduce it down drastically. Me, I'm just exactly if you do one hour normally now, if you're just recovering from COVID, after maybe you feel like okay, you've rested for like a week, two weeks, and you want to go back to exercise, you can start with 10 minutes exercise. It's not too little to start with. Mm -hmm. You can start with from 10 minutes gradually, weeks after, you can improve to 20. 30. And back to the usual. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, I've been here with Elizabeth Opemipo. So right now, we're going to take a short break. And when we return, our conversation continues with Elizabeth. Don't go away. Well-being. Stay healthy. You're welcome back. So now, we are going to return because I was actually getting trying to understand because i had a neighbor who was suffering from covid19 okay. yeah because before people used to say okay i don't know anybody who is suffering from covid19 and all of that but she was suffering from it at a little a little while she usually goes for road walks and all of that so when she had this problem and somebody told her okay you have to be eating hot pepper soup for you to get better but we're not really talking about the treatments of covid19 still on the exercises she okay this day she went out and she she slumped so i don't know whether to connect that with covid19 or um the issue of heart health you know and exercises i don't know now like i said before i gave an answer i said that covid affects the heart it affects the lungs mm -hmm. sometimes it affects the brain 
So for some, is now is kind of a symptom with people with stroke too. Now it's just that they can still move the body. Mm -hmm. For you that is just recovering, yes, you need to take it slow, because definitely when you were not, when you were sick, when you were down with the COVID, you couldn't do some of these things. So for you to get back into that activity, again, it's a gradual process. Taking a walk down, walk down the road or something is not that stressful. But how long are you going? How far are you going? If you used to walk 20 kilometers before, I think you should reduce it to 2 kilometers or 3, 4, 5. Exactly. Because now you are trying to, you are recovering from a virus. Yes. That probably has affected your heart health or the way you normally do things. So going back to your normal life, or your normal like activity. nothing happens yes. is dangerous dangerous it's very very dangerous so you need to take it slowly look at it can i do this thing okay even if you can do it how long can i still do it for the amount of time i normally would have done it for mm -hmm. before so if they said your that that your neighbor if she had how far was she walking she 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 stayed for like two hours anytime she goes out before coming back now if she used to stay two hours she can reduce it to 30 minutes like i said because now you don't have so much strength like you would have normally. Yes. So you just need to take it slowly. Or slowly. seek medical exactly. advice. Yes. Taking pepper soup. I'm not saying taking pepper soup is wrong. Do you understand? Yeah. But now you're talking about um, definitely because there are definitely drugs they would have given you there. For that drug to function, you still need to rest. Exactly. You still need to do some things. You're still exercising mm -hmm. though because exercise is actually very important. You cannot overemphasize mm. the importance of exercise. True. So, what you need to know how your body functions and what suits your body. Okay. Okay, so now, is there a difference between physical activity and physical fitness? And then still on that question, how can physical activity and physical fitness be accessed in elderly people? Maybe you might want to take them bit by bit. The differences between physical activity and physical fitness okay for there's definitely a difference between physical activity and fitness. physical fitness yes now physical activity this is the things that we do when we move our body yeah. but the ability to be able to do those things that's where the fitness comes in yeah you might want to do your day-to-day -day runs but you don't have the strength to do that that's where the fitness comes in so the ability to be able to carry out those activities that's where physical fitness comes in and how to assess what did you yes say? how can it be assessed among elderly people <sighs> okay <laughs> now <laughs> you know when it comes to elderly people you need to be very careful because now they are very should i say de delicate fragile exactly they are fragile so you cannot do too much with them in as much as they need to exercise so that one of your parts will not be stuck or so it doesn't induce stroke. It's not as flexible exactly, as it used exactly. to be before. So you need to, they need to keep the bones and the joints working. Exactly. They need to keep working. They need to keep, they don't have to do something very stressful. They can be on their bed, just lift their knee a little, knee bent, bicycle and bulls and the rest of it, just to exercise their joints and bones. It doesn't have to be a stressful something. Okay. Okay, so what advice do you have for people who, <laughs> you're smiling at that, for people who don't engage in regular exercises at all, to just go to work, eat, sleep, wake up, go to work, they have a routine. What exercise, what kind of advice do you have for them? Um, some people are very, very lucky. They can just wake up, eat, and sleep. But the way their body breaks down glucose, breaks down energy, is very, very fast. And while some people it doesn't break down like that so but for people that my advice for people that don't even do exercise at all see exercise is a thing of the mind you have to make up your mind that okay i want to do this thing i want to be able to even if it's for five seconds it's not it's not too little so they have to make up their own mind because i can take you to the gym you do some push-ups you do some little things then in front of me, you finish a whole bag of food. <laughs> Do you understand? Yeah. Or when you get to the house, you, you just relax and relent from it. So, though, they need a little push too mm from yeah. people around also. But it has to be from within. They have to make a conscious effort. I want to, I do, want this. to do this thing. Yeah. 
Yes. You can just only take them there and they don't end up doing it. Okay. You have to decide to do it on your own. Okay. So for people like me now, they are very, very hardworking. <laughs> how, how can exercise be made attractive for people like me? Lazy people, how can we make it attractive? Like looking at a plate of pepper soup. Okay. We have what is called aerobics. Okay. Some people like to dance. But they are exercising. So... Like that now, you're already getting attracted to the Oh, this person is dancing. You don't know we're actually doing exercise. Or you, you can see plenty of people dancing. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? So for someone that likes dancing, you've attracted that person to join you in exercising. Mm. For someone that likes, okay, should I say watching TV now? It could be from TV now and see this person. What is this person doing? I want to try and do it. It could be true talks. Okay, let's take a walk. Let's just... Gradually, you are doing it, attracting the person to what it is that you know how to do best. Mm. So, but yet, still, like I said, the person needs <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Thank you very much, Elizabeth. It's been a wonderful time having you in the studio. I've really learned a lot. Thank you so much for sharing your ideas with us on fitness. Thank you very much. As we end the show today, know that we are personally responsible for our health. So for our well-being and happiness, it is important to uh, imbibe healthy lifestyles. Don't simply assume that since there's no problem, everything is all right. Keep track of your well-being. And that is it on Well-Being here on 84 TV Radio. I am Eugenia Uheme. Bye for now. <laughs>